Chase, what are you doing, bro? What's up, kids? <laughs> Getting ready for the show, brother. Nothing like a little band workout. Shoulders. <laughs> oh, my buddy Mike Junk used to say, my, my buddy Mike Junk used to say, if you try to get by, you'll get trapped. <laughs> And you got a lot of ties there. What's going on? You can tie people up in those ties? I'm at my I'm at my office at MLB Network. This is uh 13 years of ties over here in suits. I'm just uh you know getting that's how I dominate. Knowing you as well as I know you, I bet half of those ties aren't yours. I know I, I know you've no, stolen some of those through the years. Dude, I have stolen a couple from Billy Rip, but whenever I go on air, Billy Rip Billy Ripkin will text me and be like, bro, that's my tie. And I'm like, you a million. How do you know which one's your tie? One thing I do do, it's a little trick. I never untie my ties. Oh. Uh, <laughs> do you not know how to tie a, a tie? No I, no, I know how to tie, but when I first started MLB Network, I didn't know how to tie a tie, so I'd be like, I was like, it was like going to a freaking, uh, I was like going to homecoming in high school. Like, Dad, can you tie my tie before you go on that road trip? You know, your dad's tying your tie for you. Like, there you go, son. And I just, ne I never really learned to like tie a good tie. So Rip, when yeah. I first got to the network, was like, this is how you tie a tie. And then, so I just keep like this, bro. And I just. Take them, put them. I know how to tie a tie now, though. All right. Well, that's Don't good to know. Me. All right. Well, <laughs> so we got something special planned. We're going to explain it in a minute. But how was your 4th of July weekend? It was your birthday. Oh, yeah. It was my birthday, but it was, it was Jess's birthday, your wife's birthday, too. Yes, it was. It was great, man. It was great. Went to the Bucko game for the Miracle League of the South Hills. We had a box, and my buddy Tim Gephardt put on a little, little party for me, and uh, you know, it was great. We had a great time. We were up on the big screen and stuff, so it was really cool. What'd you guys do? We we had everybody over here. We had our whole Jess's side of the family and my dad and my my brother was in town, Rob, who you know. Oh, nice Rob was in all. Oh, love Rob. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he it was here and we we were just we had basically like a COVID birthday party. Like nobody had any parties last year. So this year we just we had a party with everybody. We celebrated everybody's birthday. It was really fun. It was a really nice time. But nice dude. Nice more important. Well, what do we got going on today? We're going to roll the animation first, Chase, before we get going, aren't we? Done deal. We got to do it. We got to do it. Go. Hit it, baby. Hit it, baby. Casey, what's up, brother? Dude, I'll tell you what, this is this is this is a big one for us, bro. Because listen, a lot of people celebrate their 10-year anniversaries and, and, and you know, a lot of people do uh big parties for 10 years. We're celebrating 10 episodes because yep. we're gonna take a look back. Because it's funny, I I remember the first episode that we we that we talked, we practiced before the first episode ever, mm -hmm. and it went so bad that I was thinking, oh. Chinch. We might not want to do this. I know. Right? I, saw, I said it on one of the episodes. I said to my my wife, Jess, I was like, we, our friendship might be over. Like, we might, have screwed, <laughs> we might have screwed everything up. But we're here, man. We did it. <laughs> Ten episodes in, right? So yes. here's what we're doing. Everybody at home, this is so cool. We're so happy to be doing this. We're shocked that we made it this far, right? Like, we had no, <laughs> we had no right. thoughts we were going to make it this far. Well, well, well remember, remember our motto. Our motto was ready, fire, ready, aim. Ready, fire, aim. Yep. It's Absolutely. working. It's working, dude. We're it's working. We've had some great weeks. We've had some guests. We, you know, and and we got momentum, bro. It's like that snowball. You yep. build and you and you roll it downhill, and all of a sudden it becomes a freaking humongous snowball. That's where the mayor's office is going. Yes, and it's been so awesome. <laughs> but you know, people are just starting to catch on in these last like two or three weeks. So we thought, you know, for our tenth anniversary, our ten week anniversary, <laughs> we would do yes. something to catch everybody all up on you know kind of where we started and where we where we are now and how excited we are to do this and you ready we're going to play some clips we're going to talk we're, we're going to play clips that hopefully people who haven't heard it yet they're going to hear some stuff from guests and whatever and everything but what i want to do first is take you back to that first episode because it was so different than what it is now and uh here let's watch it now cool and then we'll talk yes. about that when we get off All perfect right, here we go perfect <laughs> i love it hey welcome First ever podcast in the mayor's office, uh, Ready, Aim, Fire. I think this is more like a Ready, Fire, Aim. Chinchy, what do you got, man? Um, we actually have breaking news right now. Albert Pujols being released by the Angels. It's just wow. out. One of the best hitters 
the game's ever seen and I've ever, I've ever seen up close. Are you as nervous about this, I guess, is the main question, as you were like on opening day back in the and, day? And opening day is huge in Cincinnati. Me, next thing I look over and there's a naked Pete Harris walking up. Not the best body in the big leagues. Man, I like talking Reds. Some Mets news that you didn't love. Yeah, you know what I did love? I, the back of the baseball card doesn't lie. You know, I, I was always like, man, I like to have my hands back. If Otani continues to do what he's doing, how he's out. How is he not the MVP? Seems like he's got the stuff to be a super big time player and the genes. This is a young man named Jack Leiter. You kidding me? I said, Jack, you got the whole basement, bro. I got it the best. Pedro, I don't know, man. Your dog's pretty cute. Any good TV shows you guys recommend? Uh, you got to put the closed captioning on, on though, because I, what'd they say? Big Sky right now. I miss it. This is a moment we've all been waiting for here. I love I love baseball cards. There, there has to be a way to open up a pack and then just and have a story. Well, I think I need glasses change. I think I'm gonna go with the Donruss 1990. Will Clark was my idol growing up, dude. Oh, last card. Oh. oh. Wait, my whole life to meet this guy. It was literally like you know he had the cape going, boom, he would swing the Batman, you know. Bam. Drops absolute bad head on this freaking inside he heater. And you feel good? That's it. You just did 35 minutes of live something. You like it? <laughs> Should we bring somebody in at the end here, Chinch? Oh my god. <laughs> For some reason, I'm having technical difficulties. I can't hear it. You just reinvented No Filter Network. Now I can pay for all this stupid equipment you made me buy. <laughs> uh, we're taking off. Mayor's Office podcast in the books. And uh, ready, fire, and we did it, brother. I'll see you next week. Oh man, it's so good, dude. It's so funny. It's so funny to look back just those. Those those nine weeks ago. I mean, it's funny yeah. to look back there, and it's funny to look and and see that who holds. You know, we broke that and we had that breaking story, and I think yeah. we started to realize. You know, as we as we went on week by week, hey man, we we got to start. Uh, you know, talking about the stories. It's all about the yeah. stories and and having some fun and and and, and get, doing some content that that'll last forever. So I think that's a big thing about this show is. So many good stories, so many fun times. You know. Exactly. You know, when we first started this, it was all it was really like. The whole thing we talked about is we've been friends for so many years and you've told some of the most crazy I'm t I'm sorry. You go on any <laughs> podcast or people call me all the time going, Can we get Sean on? Can he tell a story? Can we tell a story? <laughs> and you know, this day and age you can get your breaking news anywhere, Twitter, Instagram, whatever. Yeah. We're friends with like, you know, John Heyman's gonna trump us every time we do something, <laughs> right? But yeah. so what was cool is how we kind of evolved to a point where it really is all about the stories, because in my opinion, I know you're my friend, but in general, I still think you're the best storyteller in all sports. And that's kind of like where the whole main thing about this came. And what I didn't know was I thought I knew all your stories. You have some <laughs> of the most my, me and my, my wife just calls you Clark Griswold, because it's like <laughs> the stories Sean tells are so absolutely insane that we thought we'd take a look back right now. At the best stories Sean has told thus far, far on our 10 episode anniversary. Take a look. I had a I had an experience in Shea Stadium back when I was with the Reds. You had to go down this like, you know, I, it was like dangerous. It's like dripping like liquid you've never seen before. You're like, if you touch that liquid, you might die. You know what I mean? Like, and this is like probably like 2003. And in between the clubhouse and the dugout, there's this there's these two curtains. Can't make this stuff up, dude. So behind those curtains, you think it's gonna be the Wizard of Oz, but it's not. I go to get the third ball, it looked like a Doberman pitcher. Oh my god! It's like you're scared at night when you think the boogeyman's in your closet. You guys are completely scared. I'm like, what's wrong, case? Like, I just ran across my feet. I was trying to warm up, get ready for the game. So like Bob Boo's like, you ready to go? I was like, listen, I think I'm ready because I, I don't want to go back and warm up. That was my Shea Stadium, same experience. With Folks are, are a treat right now, a big treat. Yeah, my first major purchase of Pro Ball, I bought two Honda Accords. I am the richest human being alive. And I saved a couple bucks on the stick shift, which is great. But John Cunningham in my car, he shows up with a huge dent in the front. He gave me the I don't know. I'm like, boom, there's a dent in the front of the car. I'm, I'm not putting the stick shift money back into the dent. So my first big league, big league spring training was with the Reds in 1999. I roll into spring training, bam, there goes Barry Larkin in his Hummer. Boom, here comes, you know, Greg Vaughn in his Mercedes, Pete Harnish in his freaking Audi. Oh yeah, baby, here comes the two-door Honda Accord, couple dents in the front, no big deal. Freaking security stops me. Like, this is players only. This is the players lot, players only. Like, I know, 
I'm at first base for the Reds. Now this card, uh, I, I, you can't judge a book by its cover. I swear to God, sir, I am the first baseman for the Cincinnati Reds. Denny Nagel was coming in behind me in his freaking Cadillac. He's like, what's up, Case? I'm like, hey, what's going on? I go, he knows me. He knows me. No, he really is the first baseman for the Cincinnati Reds. What, what are you doing with this card? I'm like, this is the greatest card ever. I got it when I was drafted. It's not if I'm on the court. But I still miss that accord. To this day, I wish I still had it. I know what happened to it, though. A deer, this is, what, this is how it went down. A deer jumped the median, bam, through the windshield, totaled the car, 95 Honda Accord, she gone. That was the end of it. That was the end of the court. <laughs> now you're talking about the first time you gave your dad a pass yeah. to a game. What's great about baseball is it's a, truly a father-son journey, right? I mean, when you're, when you're younger, you're throwing catch for your dad, your dad loves baseball, you love it too. I give a pass. To, uh, to my dad and my father-in-law, Big John Kanka. Get a chance to see Griffey up close, Adam Dunn, see these guys crush the ball. So <laughs> my dad comes to batting practice with a shirt on. It's like, it's a, it's an old shirt that says, you know, the mayor. And it's it's like a, a caricature of me blowing a bubble. And like my, my team's just <laughs> yeah, starts to hey, bro. Yeah, he's like, hey, did you tell your dad to wear that good shirt of you with the mayor? I'm like, ah, oh, come on, he's my dad. He's, he's proud. So it's a really fun day. I'm trying to get a big league experience for my dad. I'm out there doing my stretches, you know, I'm up, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like down to the right, you know, and I'm down to the right for five, down to the left for five, you know, I'm doing all my stretches. So next thing you know, I go down to my right, you know, get a couple of stretches. And I go down to my right and I hear, hey, Case, is that your dad? And I go, and I'm and now I'm on my hamstring. So I'm like, yeah, where, where, where's my dad in the stands? They go, no. Is that your dad running a pole? What? So I, I get up and I look over and there's my dad and my father-in-law running from the right field foul pole on the warning track, on the field, five minutes before the game, full sprint, pole to pole. And I'm like, what the hell is he doing? You gotta be kidding me. So my dad's running a full sprint with my, with my father-in-law, John Kanka. I think he gets about to the 375 sign in the left center gap, just freaking yard sale on his hamstring. Boom! Ah! You know, he goes down. John Kank is like, I think John Kank like put him over his shoulder. John Kank is one of the biggest dudes ever. Puts my dad over his shoulder. I go <laughs> running in and like, you know, I'm like thinking he might, I think he might have gone to the training room. They're like giving ultrasound to my dad. They're giving stem to my dad, ultrasound, freaking, they got it, they got him in the ice bath. I'm like, you got it, what's going on here? And meanwhile, I'm like flustered because I'm getting ready to play a big league game. I got my dad freaking running a pole, blows out of him. He's getting escorted off the field. He's in the train room. They're freaking got ice on him. He's in the he's in the cold tub. They got stem units on him. Like this is unbelievable. So after the game, I'm like, I'm like that. Like first off, are you okay? He's like, yeah, I'm fine. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm like, what, what's what are you doing? What are you doing running a pole? He's like, ah, oh, it's a dream come true, Shawnee. A dream come true. He's like, every time, because we, we used to go down to spring training when we were kids, and you'd see the pitchers when they come out of the game, they'd run poles. And my dad's like, that's so cool. Only in spring training can you see guys running poles, you know, when they come out of the game. I'm like, I know, but there are pitchers in the game. They actually play, and then they're the pitcher, and they're going to run a pole, right? So it's like, dream come true, dream come true. So I'm like, okay, it's no big deal, you know? But then I'm like, Dad, I'm like, you can't do that. I, I, I'm trying to give you the big experience, but I can't give you a pass anymore if you're going to run a pole right before the game in front of everybody in packed house. I got my teammates crushing me. And, and, you're, and you're, he goes, he looks right at me at me, Chish. He goes, what is that? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like, it's like I turned into this little kid, like, oh, I just got yelled at by my dad for something he did. But, you know, it's like, all right, whatever, dad. It's all good. I <laughs> love it. I love it. Some of the best food is in Milwaukee, bro. Before the game this one time, usually you got a nice little spread, right? The brats from the stadium brats down there for us, wrapped in like aluminum foil. So I'm like, you know what? I haven't really eaten today. I deserve a brat, you know what I mean, before the game, because it's probably going to be delicious. I crush a brat, I'm like, boy, that was delicious. So sure enough, I crush another one. And for some reason, I started to think to myself, hey, Three's, three's the number. I'm gonna go for three brats because I'm starving and I'm just gonna see roll the dice, you know? Man, I don't know if I'm feeling too good. Let's roll, boys. Time to get it on. First to bat, wham, double the gap. I'm like, oh yeah, here we go. Next to bat, like the third inning, bam, double left center gap. I'm like, oh, we're rolling, we're rolling. Fifth inning comes along, right? And I'm out, I'm out in the field. 
And all of a sudden, man, there's a rumble in the jungle in my stomach. Just bad boiler, bad boiler alert. Like, oh man, I don't feel good. Like, and, I, and I, what's so funny is I remember thinking, man, why don't I feel good? And I was like, oh yeah, I ate three brats right before the game started. I forgot about that. I'm third off the next inning, right? Yeah. So, and I just come sprinting off the field as fast as you could, just like freaking Michael Johnson in his prime. Just, whoa, you know. Next thing you know, I'm in the stall. I'm just like, I'm going to be in the bathroom. I'm in the hole this inning, bro. Case, you're on deck. Bam, another knock. I got three brats, three knocks. Ate three brats that day. I got three more hits. Next day, three more brats. Nine brats I ate in three game series. Nine hits. We had to get out of Milwaukee as quick as possible. I was like, get me out of Milwaukee ASAP. I remember in Akron, Ohio, when I was in Akron, we're just like, hey guys, let's get the cash. We, we don't have any money at that point in our lives. We're cashing it up. Boom, I, you know, the first night there, we have a workout. I go up to my bed that night and I just jump on the bed real quick. Boom, I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. And at that time in my life, I wasn't handy at all. Oh man, what a buzzkill. Like, so I just laid like, I laid like this, like for the first night. I was like, that ain't bad. It was not that bad. Chitch, you, chitch, chitch, chitch. Chitch. No, I, my back was good. I was 22. Yeah. And a couple nights I felt like I was on the Titanic and I was like, I was like hanging on to it. I'm like, help, hey guys, Titanic's going down. It's all right though, because I'm, I'm good. I'm holding on because the bed's slanted. I can hold on without going. But I hit, ended up hitting 386 at Akron, so I was like, man, this worked out great. Uh, but are you as nervous about this, I guess, is the main question, as you were like on opening day back in the day when you were playing? Uh, dude, you know, Chid, you know what's funny, bro, is that like, I think back to the opening day jitters. I think back getting traded from, uh, you know, getting traded from the Indians to the Reds opening day, about 14 hours from more opening day. You're talking about opening day jitters. Scared to death, man. I'm scared to death. <laughs> I pull up, boom, I'm going to be late for batting practice because I'm coming from Winter Haven, Florida. Just been traded. Uh, I'll trade for Dave Berber, the opening starter for the Reds. I'm pulling in. I, I literally am I'm sick to my stomach, right? My stomach's turning so bad. And uh, and I, I walk in the clubhouse there in Cincinnati with the opening day jeers like you wouldn't imagine. And, and, and opening day is huge in Cincinnati. It's the greatest opening day ever. It's like a, it's like a national holiday, right? And it's packed. Right, and and the city's packed, the place is buzzing. But I'm I'm just this is my first time. I don't really totally understand that yet, but I can feel it. I walk in the clubhouse, boom! I open the door. Who's the first guy I see? Johnny Bench is sitting there. I'm like, oh, oh. buddy, Johnny Bench is the first guy I see when I walk in the clubhouse, and I'm like, is this guy still playing? Is he, is he catching today? Like I didn't, you know, I was like, it was unbelievable. He, and, and Johnny looks at me as only jo as only Johnny can. He's like, hey. Let's go, man. You're late for the season. Let's get it together. I'm like, oh my God. Now I'm like so stressed out, right? So as Johnny says that to me, next thing I look over and there's a naked Pete Harness walking up. Now I don't know if you know Harness, you know, but not the best body in the big leagues, probably the funniest teammate they've ever had, but he's walking up, you know, a sloppy body walking up and he's like, hey, has anyone seen my toothbrush? And he's kind of looking where I can't see him. And I'm like, this is crazy. Johnny Bench, naked Pete Harness. Harness is walking up and he's like, he's like, uh, hey, uh, has anyone seen my toothbrush? And he just keeps walking. And as he walks past me, his toothbrush is, is hanging out of his butt. And I'm like, this is unbelievable. This is unbelievable. You know, my opening day jitters are you're phenomenal. So I walk over, shake Johnny Bench's hand. I don't know if you've ever seen Johnny Bench's hands, though. He could fit like seven baseballs in his hand. I mean, it might be more, maybe eight. It was unbelievable. So I, I introduce myself to Johnny Bench, shake his hand. My hand just goes away. It just disappears. Like, that's why this guy's one of the greatest ever, right? So... As that day goes on, I go out for I go out 15 minutes, like 20 minutes before the game. I'm a little nervous, probably 30 minutes, just to get out to the dugout. I'm obviously not playing that, that day. Jack McKeon doesn't have me in the lineup. I go out there. First thing I see in Cincinnati, Riverfront Stadium, Synergy Field. Boom! Here comes an elephant. It's standing, standing in front of the dugout, and I'm like, I don't even know what's going on here. Like this is crazy. An elephant's just dropping bombs and you know in front of the in front of the dugout you know Browns crews clean it up here come some horses cars do animals it turns out Marge shot in the parade loved these animals and she and she let the parade go through to finish up right before the game. game it was just it was that yeah, this right game. Game. And Pete Harnish picks up he does it again not only is he walking naked with his toothbrush he comes and he takes one of the biggest vats of uh, sunflower seeds and just dumping it into the elephant's trunk. And I'm like, this is this is Cincinnati, baby. And I was there eight years, and it was awesome. Every opening day in Cincinnati, 
But Major League Baseball needs to get back as Cincinnati opens up the season in Cincy game one. So that's just, that's my take. So yeah, did I have the jitters in? Yes. They're probably a little, you know, I had them today, but those were big time, bro. Those were big time jitters. This is totally off the cuff, but it's another story. It's unbelievable. So back in the day, uh, my driveway at my house in Pittsburgh just is straight down. I come out with like a, a, a pickaxe. I'm like, boom, wow, this driveway is ruined. When I was getting the driveway, I was trying to save money on the gas bill. What a what an idiot. So I had no sensor. Let's do the heated driveway. Load that bad boy up. You can't justify the cost, but you can justify the convenience. Because we were we were putting this addition onto the house. This new stone bridge walkway is beautiful. It's November. It's probably 47 degrees out. It's like light rain, right? So we go bowl and I bowl like a 110. I think my kids beat me. I was terrible. A couple gutter balls. Boom, I hit my driveway. I'm like Sid Crosby on freaking skates, bro. My car goes flying off my driveway into my neighbor's fence. I blow the fence up and all I could hear was the uh, soundtrack of the Dukes of Hazard. Just the good old boys. Bow, bow, bow. Fence and fence pieces are flying everywhere. Never meaning no harm, but oh my God. So I'm in my neighbor's yard, just blew up the fence. I get back onto the, I get back onto, I'm like, oh my God, I gotta get back on the driveway. I'm now going down the hill like Eddie the Eagle. I'm like, oh my God, I can't stop. And guess where I'm going? Right for the new edition stone bridge. Hit the brakes, the car turns, bam, right into the freaking new stone bridge. I watch it, it wobbles, wobbles, boom, it falls down. It starts smoking. Oh, everyone in the car starts crying and the kids are like, why'd you do that, dad? And, and, and the piano teacher goes like this and I'm like, so that is how the LX470 was no longer. I had to get rid of it. <laughs> You have like Clark Griswold stories. Like, it's hey, unbelievable. I just want to follow up. You're talking about your friendships and everything. You guys just explain oh, this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go, go ahead, guys. I've got it. I've got my pictures right there. Do you have that picture? Up? <laughs> yeah, it's right here. Let me see it. Damn. Oh my God, dude, that's so great. That is so, that is so great. What was that night about? What, what happened there? Sean will probably have to tell you about that night. I, I don't remember much of it. <laughs> so, Todd Walker, Gravy, Booney, and me and Donner. It was Winger. Winger opened up for Cinderella, who opened up for Poison. And it was freaking fun. It was one of the greatest concerts really? ever. That's why some of the greatest times were nothing to do with baseball. That, but that Poison concert was like, I remember the flight to Chicago. Do you remember? We were just so excited. We were like listening to Poison on the. Yeah, couldn't <laughs> get there faster. Yeah. <laughs> so Will Clark my, is my idol, man. He's my idol. He's Eric Burns' idol. He's that a lot of guys' idol, right? And you know, back in the day, you know, you get to see him in the play, in the playoffs against the Cubs and Wrigley when he was dominating. I just loved the guy, man. Like I said, it was the reason I wanted to play. I loved his intensity. I wanted to play like him. And so, um, two, I played 98 in the big leagues, 99 in the big leagues. And in 2000, I still hadn't met Will Clark. I'm like, man, I don't know if I'm ever going to meet my idol, you know? And tell you the truth, I'm kind of kind of nervous to meet my idol. You know, when you meet a guy that you love so much, you're like, man, I hope this guy's not a jerk. You know, I just want him to be, be a good dude, you know? <laughs> so, sure enough, 2000 comes, 2000 season, we have spring training. And the day before season starts, we're going up to Chattanooga, Tennessee, and we're, we're opening up their double-A stadium and we're playing the Baltimore Orioles, right, in an exhibition game. So I'm fired up, it's gonna be great. Will Clark's gonna be there, I know that. Greg Lynn, our trainer, was the trainer for the Giants back in the day when Will the Thrill was really doing his thing. So I'm like, oh man, this is so cool, so cool. So Greg Lynn comes up to me, I'm like a little kid, I'm like so nervous. He comes up to me during batting practice when both teams are kind of, you know, they're all out there, everyone's kind of getting ready to go for BP. And Greg Lynn's like, hey, Case, you want to meet the thrill? I'm like, you know it, Greg, are you kidding me? I'm going to wait my whole life to meet this guy. So he goes over, he's like, come with me. And I'm like, so nervous. And he's like, thrill, can I talk to you? He's like, hey, what's up, Gregor? How you doing, man? He comes over, he's like, hey, I got a guy that wants to meet. It's Sean Casey. He's like, oh, man, you know, nice to meet you. You know, I love your swing. You know, I was like, oh, my God, I love my swing. I was like, I, I literally, I literally, like, like modeled my swing after Will Clark. It didn't. At the end, it looked like my swing, like it kind of got tired over the time. It wasn't as, wasn't as awesome as Will Clark's beautiful swing, but it was literally like, you know, he had the cape going, boom, he would swing the Batman, you know? So I go up, he comes up, he's like, nice to meet you. I'm like, oh my guys, I go, I turn into a 12 year old. I'm like, hey man, I just want to tell you that I, I had your, uh, 
you had your posters on my wall. I had every Sports Illustrated article you ever in. I was kind of a stalker, but I lived in Pittsburgh. So, you know, Eric Burns, you know, lived in San Fran. So obviously he could have definitely stalked you and got in trouble. But I was in Pittsburgh and I couldn't stalk, you know. So I literally turned into this like 12 year old boy. I'm like, it's so nice to meet you. I've been such a big fan. Love the way you play the game. Love it when you slide in for a double and you give it this. When you score home, you give it that, you know. And I used to do that too. It's so great. Don't. So, Boom, I meet my idol. He's so nice. Like, I was so thankful he was nice because he was, I was like, that's so great. Will the thrill, baby. My life's complete, right? So, yeah. first yeah. inning we go, Will Clark's hitting third, just getting ready to rip. Ron Ballone's on the mound, lefty. Now, Ballone throws a lot of two-seamer slider, like two-seamer slider. That's, that, that's the big rig. That's what he threw, right? And so, first inning comes up. Now, we're in Chattanooga where they got a brand new stadium. The infield's kind of... You know, it's brand new infield, so it's like it's not there where it needs to be, and they're they're gonna try probably try probably over the season get it right where it needs to be. Sure enough, Will the Thrill comes in. Ronnie Ballone tries to sneak uh, a little cheese by a rat. Will Clark says, "No, Will the Thrill, Clark, baby, get me!" Bam! Drops absolute bad head on this freaking inside he heater. <laughs> he turns one over to me, Chinch. It hits no. the it, it hits the the dirt right in front of me. I just like it it, it kicks up a bad hop. Boom! As I'm hitting my, it hits my throwing hand. Bam! Like this, and I'm like, I'm like, man, that hurt. But I was like, that's Will Clark at school, you know. I'll, I'll take a shot off the thumb, you know, goes in the right field. So sure enough, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm stung a little bit after the inning. Jack McKean takes me out because it's last game before opening day. Like, what the worst thing? Last game before down, opening day. Oh yeah, it's like mm -hmm. you wait all spring training to stay healthy. You don't want to be hurt, you know. Oh. Day before opening day. So I go down in the clubhouse. I, you know. I, um, I don't know my thumb broke, right? He ends up breaking my thumb, like Joey Votto, like a little different. He he threw me in a rocket. I didn't get hit by a pitch. But Will Clark hit me a rocket, but I'm in the clubhouse. I'm all iced up. Will the thrill, another another moment. I think the broken thumb got me another moment. Will the thrill. He comes over, you know, because our clubhouse is, you know, then we're, they connected. So Will comes over, you know, um, and he's got, he's all iced up, ready to go. He's out of the game. He's like, man, are you all right? I was like, yeah, I think I'm all right. I just, Got my thumb, it was a little, little swollen, you can see. He's like, oh man, he's like, you know, apologize, but you'll, you'll be fine, rub some dirt on it, you know, I'm like, yeah. So he sends me over a back chance, you know. Case, yeah. good luck this season, you're a sweet swinging lefty, Will the Thrill Clark, and I'm like, oh yes. So it turns out that night I go to, back to Cincinnati, MRI, boom, broke my thumb out for the first five weeks of the year. But if you don't want chance, I'll take it, yeah. baby. I got a bat for the broken five weeks out. I got a bat from moving through Clark, got a chance to meet him, but he broke my thumb the first time I meet him. Yeah, baby. Well, what is going on in your background here? This is beautiful artwork. But this doesn't look like that. Like there's you right there, Chinch. I know, you, there's you, there's my, ki there's my kids. I figured, I like inspirational quotes, but I just figured I'd just put inspirational quotes because you can put whatever you want there. <laughs> then I drew a picture of, I'm me with a baseball bat. It looks more like a Snoop Dogg joint, though, than it does a, than it does a bat. So, can you see that one? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I was trying to improvise, bro. Art's not my uh, form, you know. How about we're like we're at Bill Street or something, and you know, Sean's giving these guys two dollar tips. <laughs> <laughs> That's not, dude, that's not. Uh, $2. No, 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 I'm going to tell you this story. I come down with this big bag, right? And I'm, I'm about to get on the bus. There. It was six minutes till the bus leaves. Big league bus to the yard. Nick goes, what are you doing? I go, I'm taking my bags to the bus. He's like, this is the show. You don't ever touch your bags at the show. He goes, go upstairs and return your bags right now and call the bellman and call the bell. I'm like, are you serious? He's like, yeah. I'm like, there's six months for the bus leaves. He goes, take a cab. He's like, you don't touch your bags in the big ones. So I go running upstairs and before I get up there, I go, I go, Mick, I go, what do I tip the guy? He goes, two bucks a bag. He goes, you got two bags, give him four bucks. So all right, cool. Fast forward till 2003, Dempster, Kearns and, and, and Dunner in my room and the guy comes up and I'm making $8.5 million at the time. And the guy, I have two bags and I gave him four bucks and Dunner's like, bro, did you just give that guy four bucks? I go, yeah, it's two bucks a bag. He goes, are you kidding me, dude? I give a hundred bucks. I give a hundred bucks for the boat. I go, are you serious? He goes, I go, Jeff Manto told me six years ago it was two bucks a bag. He goes, not when you're making $8.5 million, it's not. <laughs> Oh. Bro, this is why this is so great. I mean, this is why we what we talked about is like it. it's so funny looking back at life, man. Like 
I have been have such a cool life. I've had so many different experiences all the way from childhood till now. <laughs> yeah. and, and it's so there's so many funny things have happened. And I think that's a great thing about a good story. And I've I feel I feel like I you know, I've been I'm blessed with that talent to tell a good story. <laughs> and it's are. fun, you know, and it's funny stuff. And I think the greatest thing is just like I love to hear a good story. And I know our listeners love to hear a good story. And I, that's what I that's what we envision with this podcast was yeah. hey, tune in. You want to hear some good stories, you want to laugh. You want to get into the baseball world and 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 just in life in general and yeah. and just uh, get away for a little bit. So that's why I love this podcast, dude. And I and I'm I'm sure you you feel the sentiments. I I, I totally do. Me too. I, like I said, I I thought I knew all your stories. I don't even know the half of them yet, and we're just getting started. <laughs> Again, we're, we're I have so forward. change change. I have so many more, and, and <laughs> yeah. I'm so I'm so ticked off because today I thought of two, and I'm like, oh, I'll remember <laughs> those, and, and I'm not now I can't remember, but I'll remember them, and I'll, and I'll get me. them to you soon. I always tell you to text me the stories. You gotta text <laughs> them, and I put them in a little binder. <laughs> <laughs> and and every like couple of weeks, I'm like, Sean's like, what are we going to talk about? I'm like, you have nine stories here that I put in my binder. <laughs> Pick two. Anyway, so, so good. now we got a little big for our purchase and we we're like, you know what? Maybe we are decent at this. Maybe we are. We aren't. People can judge for themselves. But then we were like, let's get some guests. Right. Yeah. I, I, I got to give you credit because you were like, you know what? We're both idiots. So can we start like with my friends? Like people I know, <laughs> yeah. people I care yes. about, and I thought that was a great idea. You're like a producer now, thinking, and we got a couple, a few of. So far, for me personally, I, I've been working in this industry for a long time. The three guests we've had on were the three nicest people I've ever worked, I've ever dealt with in my life. Dude. Talk about a little bit about how well, we got into getting guests and 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 your yeah. boys that you picked first and why you. Picked well, we were we were a few weeks in and we were talking about that, and it's so funny because moving forward, I still have so many guys in my mind, like. I just think like that, like I said, this thing is going to be so awesome because we're going to have so many good guests. But, you know, my first the first one that came to my mind was Adam Dunn, just because Dunner's such a great friend. You know, we've had some good times together, some good stories. And, you know, that was really awesome. And then going to Todd Walker, just talking, you know, we were kind of in the College World Series bit at the time at Omaha, bringing Walk in. He's the greatest college player of all time, LSU yeah. history, too. And then and then bringing in Dante Bichette, you know, one of my favorite teammates, talking, hitting with him and just talking a little bit about, a bit about Bo and, 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 and him as a dad. So just, just some great stuff, some great guests and many more good ones to come, Chinch. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll tell you what, like I learned something from each one of them. And I mean, it was really cool that Adam Dunn came on because I mean, for all anybody thinks you're friends with him. Adam Dunn doesn't really right. do much other than fish and hang out and do whatever <laughs> he wants. And for him to come on, obviously it proves how good of a friend you are to him and we'll kick it off there. But here are right now the best of the interviews. And I, I got to tell you what, they're all awesome. Listen, this, this episode for me is probably has been the most special one. You know, we haven't even done it yet, but I know I have one of my best friends on here, one of my favorite teammates of all time, one of the greatest home run hitters the game's ever seen, 462 career home runs, which is unbelievable, which is top 50 all time, tied with Jose Canseco. I don't know if he's done it, probably doesn't even know this stuff, but 14 years in the big leagues, Played with the Reds, the Nationals, the White Sox, the A's. Um, five straight seasons with 40 or more home runs. The guy was a walk machine, 854 uh, career OPS, which is elite. And uh, just bottom line is one of the greatest teammates I've ever had. One of my best friends. Dunner, welcome to the Mayor's Office Podcast, Dunner. This is the hardest podcast show interview. It's the hardest thing in the world to get on. I've been trying to get on this <laughs> Since like literally the first time I heard about it, I'm like, I got, I, I, I've got to get on this thing, man. And it worked out six, six, six shows later, so I'm excited about it. <laughs> That's right, bro. That's right, you're in, Dunner. So like, like for all the people that you know that'll be watching this, like, um, what have you been doing, man? What, what, what have you been doing, man? What's, what's going on down there in Texas? You got four little ones. I know you got a really little one, which is, which is. Which is great. So, what's going on in Adam Dunn's life right now, 2021? Yeah, um, if you would have told me, you know, 10, 10, about 20 years ago, how um, how my life would be now, um, I would have probably, you know, laughed in your face. Like, come on, <laughs> really? You think like I'm going to be getting up and taking kids to school and picking them up, and then, you know? But yeah, I mean, basically, I'm a glorified Uber. I mean, in my life. <laughs> You know, she's she's got even worse than I do. So, uh, yeah, I mean, basically running kids around, 
baseball starts, baseball never stops, really, you know, then football picks up for them and my eight year old daughter's in softball and uh, you know, it's it's I'm telling you, man, it's it's a grind. Now are you are you doing are you helping coach with the eight year old girls softball? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> that is a different beast. People can say what they want about baseball, this, baseball. I'm telling you. And then the people that, that their daughters play softball, they know what I'm talking about. Like, it is a different breed of people. I mean, they are in it, son. I'm talking, like, <laughs> win at all costs. Man. Can I ask you guys a question? I always wonder this with, like, the former athletes. Like, when your kid comes home and like all of a sudden like their elbow is up and they're standing like this or whatever, and you're a former big league player. Do you go to the coach and go, stay away from my child, or do you kind of have to find some sort of vibe there that 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 works? No, I don't. I mean, I I, I let you know I, I let those guys do their thing, you know, because I really think that that age. I mean. I just tried to put myself back then. I mean, I didn't have, you know, my dad didn't care. He could care less about sports, right? He didn't, he, he hadn't, he didn't know. He didn't know how to hit, throw, catch. I mean, he, he did, but, um, you know, he never taught me. He was like, wing it, man. Like, you get some information, take it. And, uh, you know, and I see some of these, some of the stuff that these guys are teaching, and, and I'm like, you know, shake, just shaking my head. But again, I mean, if it, if it works, it works. So, I let him just roll and until I can't take it anymore. And then like, okay. whatever that, whatever he just said, just do, do, just do what you do to me and not listen to me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so my kid gets some hitting lessons, um, you know, and I'm not a big hitting lesson guy either, but he really liked, like, he won't, he, he likes to go hit with, you know, we'll go hit and do all that stuff. But, you know, as far as teaching, you know, he goes to another guy. I'm like, great. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have I have that too. I have that too. I hit with my my kids sometimes, but I have a guy that they hit with that I I'm like you know what I'm dad at the end of the day you're dad so I obviously know what I'm saying but you know you know what I'm saying it's like you, your your voice only goes so far sometimes. Dad, do you remember the story when when Lark was telling us that Shane his son Shane obviously was playing the NBA he was like dominating overseas and he was he was a good what. Beat him in horse. You beat him in horse? Yeah. He was like, I think nine. <laughs> but it was close. But I, I got it. I, I edged him out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you would. Be. You're, you're good at everything. I figured you'd beat Shane Larkin in horse. You know what I mean? That's, that's I did. big time. <laughs> he was only nine years old at the time. I couldn't get him when he was 12. <laughs> um. I'm going to go to another to, to another topic and, and another guy that, that that meant a lot to you when you first came up. I know when you when you showed up in the big leagues, all of a sudden you're you're in the outfield and you're right next to Ken Griffey Jr. Right, and and I know I know Junior, you you have a great relationship with Junior. You guys are great friends, and no, I know he. Let me stop you right there. I don't have a great relationship with Junior. I can't stand Junior. I love Ken. <laughs> okay, that's right. That's right. You love Ken. Junior, Junior, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'm not a, I'll, I'll okay. Shit I, but, <laughs> no, it's okay. That's so, that's like, so, so tell me about that a little bit. Tell me about like your relationship with Ken and your relationship with Junior and, and more importantly, what, you know, what he's meant for you in your, uh, in your career and your, in your life. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he is one of the most, and again, you know, I know you know, but you won't, you know, Ken is one of the, the most thoughtful, any word you want to say about, I mean, he is one of the best people um, on, our, on this planet, man. He does so many th good, great things, not good things, great things for people that you don't hear about. You know, he, you know, he had a very, he, well, he, does, he has got a very small circle and why I was in that circle, I don't know. No idea. Um, that, you know, we butted heads, you know, but, um, you know, the things that he's done, I, I could go on and on, and, 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 but you never hear about it. You, 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 you never hear about it. All you ever hear about is the negative stuff, right? The negative stuff about 
about you know Ken and all this, and and it, man, I would take it just like we're talking. About, I would take it personal, you know. But you guys have no idea what this this guy goes through. I mean, I've seen he, the stuff that he went through. You know, the injuries. Most people would have quit. Like I wanted to quit, and I wasn't even hurt. Like I wanted to, you know, to see the just the the abuse this dude's taking. And I'm like, what do you do? Why do you do it, bro? He's like, I love it. Like I I, I love it. Like I love it. And, and and you know, people didn't see that side. You know, they saw Junior, right? They saw the hat backwards, the uh, that guy. And um, you know that that that's the guy that 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 he had to be. That he's been, you know, his whole life being the superstar, right? But when you kind of got into that circle and, and saw Ken and, and, and understand Ken and know Ken, but I'm telling you right now, I, he, like he's he is one of the best guys there is, and um, you know he's he's helped me with so many things on and off the field. Um, just really, man, really, just I'm, I'm very fortunate for him to be in my life. And but you know, and let's let's let's, let's, let's take away from Ken for a little bit and. Think about the group that we had coming up. Oh. And me, not you know, you were you were there, right? But think about our group. We had some of the best people, some of my best friends. You, Booney, Pokey, you know, Dimitri. I mean, I can go on and on, right? Rue, all these guys. They're some of just some of the best people there is. Some of my favorite times, man. And I, I couldn't, I couldn't have been placed in a better situation than I was placed at at the time, you know, getting drafted, coming to Cincinnati, because if I would have done, probably went to New York or LA, you'd probably find me dead in the gutter somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, dude, spinning it, spinning it for a second, because um, I got, it's so funny, I got all these notes, but I'm not getting any of them. I just love talking to you, it's just so, so good where it goes. But I remember, I remember like, um, like two of the strongest guys in the team were you and Griff, right? And uh-huh. and you know I, I found this out one time with Griff. I, I remember going to the uh, remember how he used to do all the pressure points. He'd like grab you like the vocal oh, death. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, was it was unbelievable. Yeah. So this one time I'm going to the training room and I'm like, all right. And Griff comes out and, and he's like, it was just me and him in the hallway. We just start grappling like you know. Get, and next thing I know, like I didn't realize how strong Junior was until he took two fingers shot him under my ribs and lifted me up and pinned me against the wall. And I was like, oh, my God, was, that hurts so bad. It was like, I was like, oh, my God, it hurts so bad. And, and, and I, just, I, I, just, I, I just remember, like, how, that was my first time knowing how strong Junior was. And yeah. the, one time, the, the one time learning how strong you were, this is so funny. Do you remember when Carlo came to practice, our strength coach, and was like, I remember we were stretching. He's like, hey, Gunner. He's like, you're killing me, bro. He's like, you're not showing up enough for weightlifting. You got to be in there tonight after the game. Do you remember this? I do. Yeah, yeah. That was at home. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, I do. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, this is this is my version of the story. He tells you to come into the weight room, and I'm like, oh, baby, I can't wait. So when the game ended, I was like, I'm going right to the weight room. I don't even think I changed. I just bolted the weight room to make sure I didn't miss it because I knew you were pissed and I knew you were uh, coming in, right? And I remember you walk in the weight room, you walk up to the to tricep machine, you rack it. It's like 200 pounds. You're like, one, two, like for like 40. I've never seen that. And the, the tricep thing, the weights are just bouncing off the ceiling. It's like, one, two. I'm like, holy God. And then and then I remember you go over the corner. We had like this rack of dumbbells. And, and there was like the 130-pound dumbbells that had dust on them and cobwebs because no one had ever looked at them before. You walk over, you grab the dumbbells, you make sure Carlo's watching, you lay down, you rock out about 30, throw them into the corner, you say, is that good enough, Carlo? And then you walk out of the way with my like. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do remember that, yeah. I do. I, I always tell them, like, look, man, I get it. I get it. That's your job and all that. But two things. One is don't ever call me out in front of my teammates like that. And the second one, when you can bench, fight, or outrun me, then you can tell me what to do, strength and conditioning wise. Other than that, <laughs> brain and lane. Oh my God, I was so good, dude. <laughs> so good. Is it true when you were still in the minor leagues, Adam, and Sean Casey was a big league player, you would yeah. still have to play, pay for the pay per view wrestling events? <laughs> yes. And we did not. Good. I just wrote on myself a pen. Uh, 
Yeah, we had Don Julio's in Sarasota, Florida, which is a Mexican food restaurant. I think it was Don Julio's, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah Don so Julio's, yep. Me and Austin in the minor leagues, you know, making our whatever it was. I think it was at the time we were, I think we were killing it by then. I think we were making like seven fifty a month. And, uh, <laughs> living in a, living in a $1,500 you know, dollar a month apartment. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, we would go out and you know we're like, hey, you know we like we know Sean likes wrestling, we know Dimitri likes wrestling. Plus we'll get you know, a free meal and get our you know get a free meal and get our the pay we paid for. Watch for free, win win. I mean, Austin go pick up the Don Julio's, the he does, you know, it's hundred, two hundred, three hundred dollars, however much it was. And, you know, get, we get pay review at Austin's place and get there and all the you know they all show up. We're like, all right, man, cool, yeah. Thank you. And I'm like, hey, Austin, can you believe this thing's like sixty bucks now? Pay per view. Yeah, man, that's crazy. Sean's like, well, really? Man, that's a lot of money, man. Yeah. <laughs> fajitas are great. I know. I mean, we, we, you know, yeah, we got fajitas for like 30. You know, there's only 15 of us. You know, Don Julio, man, the prices really went up, right? They, I mean, they really went up since last time. That we got there. <laughs> yeah, that was like 24 bucks. Man, really? Man, that's expensive. All right, guys. It's great. Take care. You make some food. For me and Austin are like, geez, here we go. We're gonna be running with give me in days from for the next two weeks. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Those are true stories. To meet you guys go over to Donner's house. They, they, Donner and Kurzy, they're like they're in an A-ball. We're like, what's up, boys? Let's get up. Uh, yeah. We got Shawn Michaels versus the Undertaker. WrestleMania. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yep. That's so, the, but, but then the longer, you know, then we started growing up and realizing like that's just how they're wired. I mean, I I can't tell you how many times how about we're like we're at Bill Street or something, and you know Sean's giving these guys two dollar tips. <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. That's not true. Oh my oh, God, uh, two dollars. No, and it's not just the two of us. College World Series time right now, right? Who better than have arguably the greatest college baseball player of all time and one of your boys, Sean? Who we got? Yeah, Todd Walker. What's up, Walk? How you doing, brother? What's up, Case? How are you guys? <laughs> You're out here. You're out there in Omaha right now, aren't you? Yeah, I've been here about four or five days already, and we got uh, another week to go, man. So it's uh, adult spring break out here, Case. Oh, I know. I'm sure it is, brother. I'm sure. You know, this guy, 290 career hit, 289 career hitter, over 100 home runs, 545 RB, all that stuff. Played a great second base. Played 10 years in the show. Uh, and one of the things we were talking about, Walk, was, dude, you're one of the best pure hitters. Like, like. You know, we were kind of the same kind of guy. We didn't like to strike out. We were going to grind you out. You know, you face Todd Walker at the end of the game like you're in for a dog fight. You know, I mean, that's kind of how I felt too. Um, and I just – I love playing with you because I love picking your brain. You know, you being that left-handed hitter, you could you were a line-to-line guy. You were a tough guy to pitch to. You couldn't – you know, you couldn't pitch you one way because you hit the breaking stuff so well. Um, but nowadays when you watch Big League Baseball walk, and, you know, I go back to your numbers – you you struck out 571 times in 10 years, and you only and you walked 421 times. So there's like 150 more more strikeouts and walks, which is unbelievable nowadays. You know when you watch the game, uh, you know in the big leagues now, and you see the the punch out stuff. Like, what, what's your take on on all that? Well, I think first of all, Case, you talked about uh, you know not striking out. That's number one. In order to hit three, you were a 300 hitter, right? And I think my average was right up under that. Uh, we took a lot of pride in, in, in an average versus the damage numbers like the home runs and the triples. I always thought if I could hit for an average that the home runs would come, not the other way around, you know, like trying to hit home runs. And so the way to do that is not to strike out and also what you said, use the whole field. You were real good at going the other way as a left-handed hitter, even against left-handed pitchers. You know, we'd let the ball travel in on the on the off-speed, react. I was, I was a guy that sat off-speed. And reacted to the fastball. Well, a lot of people will say wow. a lot of people say it the other way around. I was like, I'm sitting on the curveball, and if they throw the fastball, I feel like I got a quick enough swing to react. But if you're sitting fastball and reacting off speed, you're going to be out in front of a lot, and you might hit some homers, but your average is going to suffer, and you're going to strike out. So what you said, uh, and what we talked about before we got on this thing was, uh, we took it personally. And if you watch the Mississippi State Bulldogs, we're here at the College World Series right now. Uh, Jake Gotro, the hitting coach, makes them beat their chest with two strikes. They look in the dugout and they beat their chest. And it's kind of a uh, an acknowledgement that I'm in a fight. They call it the two-strike fight. 
and they're going to get after it. But it's one of the rare things that I've seen nowadays where they put an emphasis on not striking out. And, you know, and I, it would drive me nuts as a coach. If you got a guy on second, nobody out, and you don't move him over, you strike out. Or you got a guy on third with less than two outs, and you can't put the ball in play to get a, get a run in. That's the kind of scenarios where strikeouts matter, you know. And I just think you and I, we took it personally. We're both on the right side of the infield, so we were talking a lot, even probably – uh, you know, when we're out there on defense or whatever, but, but, uh, but it was a lot of fun playing with you. And that Cincinnati Reds team that we had was a lot of fun. We all went out together. We all ate lunch together. You know, that was rare in the big leagues too. Dude, that's a great point. When you talk about our Reds teams, um, you know, you know, the Dunner and, and Griff and Lark and Booney and, 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 you know, all the, all the great guys that we had LaRue on those teams, um, can you can you talk about that a little bit? Because you played on a lot of teams. You know, you played with the Twins, you played with the Cubs, you played with the Rockies. You, you know, you played with the Reds, you played with the Red Sox. Um, can you take you know talk about that team and like the difference you know of, of that team and maybe some other teams you played on? Well, I I started with Minnesota, like you said. We were young back then. Uh, you know, we had a low payroll, so we weren't going to compete in the American League. Uh, we had Tom Kelly as a manager who was a veteran guy, but we had a bunch of young kids, so we weren't going to survive under that scenario. Uh, eventually, we all got spread out and moved around, and I went to Colorado under Buddy Bell, who I loved. You know, I learned a lot about the game through Buddy Bell, and uh, and he was relaxed, and, and, and we had a great time in Colorado with Todd Helton and Larry Walker and Juan Pierre and Todd Hollinsworth and all those great guys. Uh, but when I got traded from there, uh, let's see, where did I go? I went to Cincinnati. From there, uh, my first roommate was Aaron Boone, and it's, it's still kind of funny. I think you, you're the same way. Like, if you'd have told me growing up that I would have a buddy that's now the manager of the New York Yankees, I'd be like, you gotta, you gotta be crazy. But that's kind of a cool <laughs> thing for me, you know. Is my first roommate in Cincinnati was Aaron Boone. We we went to breakfast together a lot, and we we you know his dad, of course, was our manager Bob Boone, who I also loved. Um, and Danny Graves, who's here with me now in Omaha, you know, he was on that team with us. Uh, all those guys you mentioned with Cincinnati, we were just a tight group. If we had any any pitching at all, we would have rolled, man. But we just didn't have – we had some good dudes. But, you know, yeah. we didn't have, like, the A-plus guys, you know, like the Roger Clemens and the, you know, Mike Mussinas of the day where, where the Yankees had them. So we could hit and we could play defense, but we just uh, – uh, we didn't have the pitching to get it done. But it was still a fun group, man. It was probably the funnest teams that I've been on uh, in my years. Uh, Boston became a little more, you know, squeezed. Now, all of a sudden, it's for real. I love Cincinnati because it's a baseball town, but it wasn't like Boston or New York where they just grind you out if you kicked a ball in the field or if you struck out in a big situation. You know what I mean? You spent more time yeah. there than I did. But it was just oh. a, a fun, fun deal to be involved in a, in a situation where they love baseball but they weren't going to just kill you if you made a mistake. And so that's what I loved about Cincinnati. It was a great time. Um, uh, we've all gone on to do some good stuff. You work for MLB Network. Uh, Danny yeah. Graves and I are doing calling games in, at the college level. I called a lot of Red Sox games for the past few years. Uh, we got a New York Yankees manager. And, of course, like you said, Adam Dunn is bailing hay, making millions of dollars now. Is that what you said? <laughs> yeah. I think Dunners, yeah. I don't know. I, he's like – I think he's like selling soil or, or like in some hail, um, some um, bays of hail. And I think he's making up more money than when he was when he was sitting 40 homers a year and driving in hundreds. So leave it Love to it. Dunner to find like some like, you know, just Dunner's the guy that takes a shot. He's like, ah, oh, is that going to cost me a few mil? Boom, let's do that. See if we start our own company. Start, you know, Must be nice. It nice. Must yeah, be. it's so funny. Dude, I want to go back. Go ahead, go ahead, Chinch. Were you uh, were you playing second when Boone for for the Red Sox when Boone hit the homer? The wall yes, ball? yeah, I was on the field. Thanks for that reminder. Yeah. <laughs> that's the that's the advance I talk about against Mariano Rivera. You know, I know Casey, yeah. you faced him a few times too, right? He would bury that cutter up in on your hands, and I got him in like game two or three back at Fenway, where I just start my swing before he let the ball go because you know where the pitch is going to be and it's going to be accurate, you know. And I got the barrel out on it, hit it to right field, got a triple out of it. So we fast forward to that game seven. Kevin Millar is standing at second base in the extra inning game, and I'm up at the plate. And uh, I said, I'm going to outsmart him. I'm going to back off from the plate, you know. So I'm going to back off, and he can't get that cutter in on my hands. Well, he throws a backdoor cutter on the outside that looks like <laughs> it was in the third base dugout. Oh, my God. And it was God. strike one. 
it was strike one. So I'm like, all right, I got to scoop back in now. And I tried <laughs> the same swing. I'm telling you that I got him for a triple by by starting it before he even released the ball. And I thought I did it, but it got it got in on me just enough. I hit a I hit a ball to Soriano. And that was the third out in the top of the tenth or whatever it was. And then yeah, and then eventually we bring Wakefield in, and the first pitch. Aaron Boone pinch hits, right, because uh, he didn't start because he wasn't hitting well. He wasn't playing well. And so they started uh, Enrique Wilson or whoever it was. And uh, and Aaron gets in the game, and he gets a, a floater in there that didn't really knuckle, and it hit it out. Yeah, it was crazy. Well, I remember Booty. I asked him about that. I said, dude, what were you thinking when you were up there? He's like, wow, I was scuffling so bad. I think, walk. Well, I think looking back, if he's not, if he's raking at that time, he pops that pitch up. But you know, you know, you know, when you're scuffling and you're like, I got no idea what I'm doing up here, you know. And so, and I remember asking Booty that. I said, "What were you thinking?" He goes, "I was first pitch hacking." He's like, "I, I, I really was at the time scuffling." He's like, "And I saw it; it was just up, and I just took a rip, and it never, it didn't knuckle, and the rest yeah. is history." You know, what was That's that? What point. was that? What was that like, Walk? Because I mean, I know I was talking to you right before that series, and maybe even during the series, and you were telling me how electric it was there in Boston, and you know being the team that would maybe break the curse. What was that like when that ball went out, like that, that the end of that game? You know, Case, the offense for us that year, if you remember, Billy Miller won the batting title that year. He was hitting eighth for us. Jason Veritek was hitting ninth. <laughs> Trot Nixon was hitting seventh. You know, <laughs> Johnny Damon up at the top, then me, and then Nomar garcia Par, and then Manny Ramirez. Um, Kevin Millar was hitting fifth, I think. Uh, man, that lineup was just, I mean, we, we scored a lot of runs. That was 2003. Uh, so, so we thought we had a real chance. And now you go up against the New York Yankees in the uh, American League Championship Series. We felt like whoever won that series was going to win it all. Because remember, the, the Florida Marlins were sitting on the other side waiting on the winner of our series. And we went all the way to game seven. And when we lost, when Aaron Boone hit the home run, when you asked me what it was like, it, it, it broke my heart for the fans because you knew how important it was for them at the time. You know, remember, Boston hadn't won it since 1918 or whatever it was. And so we were trying to get it done for them. And I just remember on, in the front seat with Pedro Martinez on the bus going back to the hotel. I mean, sorry, back to the airport to head back to Boston. And we both just kept talking about how, how sad we were for the city of Boston. And then when we got back to Boston on the bus going back to Fenway Park, there's trash cans thrown everywhere. There's like it looked like a riot had broke out all the way on our path from the airport back to Fenway, and that made me feel worse because now you're like, man, now it really sets home as to what we almost had happen that that we didn't get done. And then of course, as the story goes, the Yankees go in with their rotation kind of messed up because we had gone seven games and the Marlins beat them that year, you know, 2003. So that made me feel a little better because if the Yankees. Had won, <laughs> <laughs> if the Yankees had won, we'd have been like, man, I was right. Whoever won this series was going to win it all. But the Marlins won it that year. Uh, and so, you know, it was a great experience for me, Case. But at the same time, it was pretty it was pretty heartbreaking, you know, because you felt like you let a lot of people down. Yeah. Dude, I, I got to go back to your Mariano Rivera story really quick um, because I <laughs> – it's so how did funny. You, how did you face him? Like, what well, that's what I'm saying. That, that's what I'm saying, bro. It's so great that you said that about your approach against Mariano Rivera because I was like, oh my god, that was my approach. And I remember uh, I had the day off one time. We're at we're at Yankee I'm with Detroit. I got the day off. I'm like, oh right, headed thrown or whatever. Leland gives me the day off, and uh, so it's like the ninth inning. I'm just like I'm sitting back, like God, what in a the, nice in the, in the case in the American League. As a as left handed hitters, you and me, yeah. if you didn't start, you don't play till the ninth yeah. against some closer. Yeah, exactly. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, cool, I got the day off. I hear Leland just he just annihilates four heaters like, let's where every turn's like, okay, she's like, you're gonna lead off against Mo. I'm like, are you serious? I thought I had the day off. I thought I had the day off. This isn't a day off. This is a freaking over right here. You know what I mean? So I'm like, I'm like. I'm like you walk. I'm like, all right. How am I how am I gonna ambush Mariano Rivera? I'm like, I, I got this. So I get you know I get loose, couple shoulder rolls. I'm not even loose. Like you know he just boom. I was up right. Get my batting gloves. I'm like, okay. I'm gonna freaking I'm gonna step in the bucket and just I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna just cheat on the cutter because I know it's coming right. I know it's coming. So sure enough, I'm like first pitch. Here it comes. I'm in there, and I'm and I'm doing the same thing you're doing. I'm kind of like he's about to throw the ball, and I'm inching backwards. I'm like, I'm. Like, <laughs> I think it was the first time in my life I started walking backwards. So 
he's about to throw it up. I'm, I'm, tip, I'm tiptoeing backwards. Like, oh. So he throws me to Carter Walk. And, and you know you know this pitch, bro. At 55 feet, it looks like a four-seam fastball. So your mind's like, is this the first four-seam fastball he's ever thrown anybody? Like, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, oh yeah, baby, it's the first time anyone's got a four seam off my run around. So I'm like, but I'm I'm already cheating for the cutter, and there it, it starts to happen, bro. It's like it's like a nightmare right in front of my eyes. I God, start cheating God. and it starts cutting, and it's like a scud missile coming at me like freaking Iraq in '92. I'm like, oh my god! And it's coming at me. Walk, it's gonna hit me right in the freaking heart. And it's it's just, and like thank God I was I was so coordinated because I'm like this is either going to hit me in the heart and I'm going to have a heart attack or I'm going to freaking hit it. So here it comes. It's coming at me. And I'm like, I'm in the, I'm stepped in the bucket. I'm like, Poof, and I'm like so far out here. Poof, dude, bro. I hit the furthest ball I've ever hit in my life over the Yankee dugout. It almost went out of Yankee stadium. <laughs> <laughs> dude, it was so far. It was some 540 feet foul. I, I mean, directly foul. Like, Wait, well, you get the trying, on it at least. Dude, I dropped the head on it trying to save my life walk. I just trying to save my life. It went to the – literally, it was a row from going out of Yankee Stadium. I was like, wow. And, and you know, bro, when you see guys do that, you're like, that's bad hitting. Like, that, that's bad hitting. I, I, I was just going to say, I never pulled the ball foul. I always hit yeah. the other way foul. But I never – yeah, when you pull, when you see a guy pull a fastball foul, they're off. They're off. Yeah. That's what Mariano made you do. It made you do weird things. But yeah, and then so it was like it was like you said when you when you got off the plate. It's so funny, bro. You got off the plate, and then he drops that backdoor cutter. So he just saw me hit a ball like probably no humans ever hit. It was ridiculous. <laughs> ne- next pitch, I didn't even know he had this pitch, bro. He throws me, a, and I'm cheating again because I know it's a cutter. He throws me a two seamer. I didn't even know he had one. <laughs> Break my bat off the end. <laughs> just a fifteen hop right to him. Can of dog crap, bam, I'm out. I'm like, what a freaking – I was like, I wanted to kill I wanted to kill Leland for putting me into that game. It was ridiculous. <laughs> I hated that. That's what I'm saying. As a left-handed hitter in the American League, if you didn't start, you didn't yeah. play. And I was young with Minnesota in the American League. And when I didn't start, I'm sitting there. I've never pinched it in my life, Case. I played at LSU. <laughs> I played in the minor leagues. You, you get every at-bat, right? So now yeah. I'm sitting there, I'm pinch hitting. I have no idea how to do that. I'm sitting for eight innings. And no tempo, no timing, no anything. And you're facing closers. And oh, by the way, Tom Kelly gave you the tape. So, you have tape. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm 0-1 on every closer so I'm 98. And I'm like, how am I going to get this done? Now I'm facing fork balls. And I'm saying, that's, that's where I came up with the concept in baseball. If, if somebody wants to make you, if, if somebody wants you to fail, they can make you fail, man. Because I, would, I don't think I ever got a hit off a closer. Ever. Ever. Back then. That's so good. Oh, one off every nasty closer. Oh, so good. Then they, go to work. then they go to work. Then they're throwing yeah. fork balls. You know, back then, everybody had a fork ball. Uh, Eric Gagne, you know, uh, Percival. Percival had this tight slider, whatever it was. I still don't know what it was, but it wasn't hittable, you know. Boom! I tell you what, brother. This might be the best. This might be our best show ever with Dante coming on like this. Like we thought we'd, we were, Dante, we were telling just some stories. We're trying to figure it out. And, that we're, and then you come on. We're, we're so excited, dude. We're so excited, bro. <laughs> I've never been more excited to see anybody in my life. And I'm a good friend. So. This is great, guys. Thanks for joining us, man. Uh, dude, so, where, Dante, where are you right now, bro? I'm in Buffalo with, with the Blue Jays. Uh, so we're just, just playing ball, man. Looks like we might get rained out tonight, but just in my hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> Nice, dude. So, are, are you? So, tell me what. Tell us all. What, what are you doing, like right now? What are you doing? What's the life of Dante Bichette? What's happening in Dante Bichette's life right now? You know what? I got that that job case. You know where you just you kind of show up when you want to show up and, and help the yeah. hitters out. So you know nobody counts on me. I don't get blamed for nothing. Perfect <laughs> job. Perfect job. <laughs> So, so do you go – like, how often are you with the team? And are you just with the big league team, the Blue Jays, or do you go to the minor leagues too and roam around? You know, I'll run around in the minor leagues. COVID, COVID has put a little damper on that, but I think they're loosening that up, and I'll be able to go work with the minor leaguers. I've done a little scouting, a little amateur scouting. Uh, all spring training, I'm with the team. And I, and, and when they're usually when they were home and done eating, I was with them every day. 
and now I'm in Buffalo with him. So, you know, it's kind of a neat gig. Cool, man. That's I well, dude. The last, the last minor league stop I had, I uh, hit the game winning home run for the Buffalo Bisons. My my bad though. You know, no big deal. Championship to win the championship, 1997. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can, let's. Can we I want to go back a little bit, man, because you know, just looking at your career, and you got drafted by the Angels, then you got traded to the Brewers, um, and then you got traded. What was for Dave Parker, right? Dave Parker was it you? You for Dave Parker in that deal, which is pretty interesting. Cobra, one of the best ever, too. Um, but then your career started to really take off when you went to Colorado. You had a good year in Milwaukee, but it really started to go to another level. What clicked for you? So, I was given the job in '91 for the Brewers, and I had a great spring training. I had my two strike approach. Everything was going well, hitting for average. And the big mistake I made, I was a rookie, I was a young kid, you know. The, the manager, Tom Trevor Heron's corn said, listen, we're giving you the job. We don't care how many times you strike out. We don't care what your average is. We want you to hit 25 and drive an 80, 80, 85 runs. And I said, I could do that in my sleep. You know, you run into 25, 80 RBIs, that'll come with 25 homers. So I, that's what I was doing. Around the all-star break, I, I remember I had 12 homers and 44 RBIs, I think. Perfect, right? Just what he asked. But I said about 230, 240. And he said, you know what? We're going to let this other guy take a shot at it. And I, and, and I was like, wait a second. That's what I was doing. You know, so that's how it went down that year. The next year I realized, and I, I didn't hit, only hit five home runs the next year. The year you were talking about was a good year for me. But most of the year I was hitting around 315, 320. And I realized, man, when you get your hits and you get big hits, the manager keeps throwing you in there, man. You just keep throwing you back in the lineup. So that's the way I went after it after that. I said, you know what? The home runs and strikeouts and things are great, but you got to be a good hitter to stay in that lineup and be productive every year, at least back in those days. Yeah. So that's really where it turned around. I, 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 uh, my two-strike approach, Casey, was why I was a big leader. The power, I just had kind of had that. But the two-strike approach is why I could hit for average. Can you talk about that a little bit, your two-strike approach, and what was it? You know, I realized, you know, you know, there's a, there's a stat called batting, batting average on balls in play. I did the math in my head before that stat was ever a stat, and I said, you know what? What if I were to cut out, you know, 50 strikeouts or something like this? How many more hits would that be? So I averaged, so I, so I did the math. Huh? What is my average when I put the ball in play? And it's around 300 for everybody. And I said, holy smokes, so you're talking 15 more hits, you know? And, and, and I started doing that math, and I was like, holy smokes, I got to cut strikeouts, man, and I can be a 300 hitter. And uh, so that's what I did. And the, the two-strike approach itself was, was, pretty, was pretty easy if you break it down. There's only two pitches that really strike you out in this game. There's the slider that you chase off the low and outside corner, and there's the high fastball. And so you got it. You got to almost sit slider speed. If you read the science of hitting with Ted Williams, he said yeah. two strikes, you sit slider speed, and you get on top of the fastball, and you inside out the fastball. So I said, listen, if I can sit slider speed, I'll be okay. I won't get fooled and let the ball get deep. I won't get fooled by the slider. And if I see a fastball, I just got to get on top of. So I, I was able to do that enough to, to cut strikeouts almost in half. That's you know, ball in play, you've got a chance, and that's what that's what my theory was on it. And I was strong enough and had enough bat speed to to get into some power swings. You know how you, power comes, you know, a week here, a week there in the season, and it makes your whole season. But but batting average has got to be there every day. You got to hit every day to do that. Yeah, Dante, I was watching you do a hitting clinic with some kid online the other day, and it, it was so fascinating because you were explaining, when I'm ahead in account, I've earned the right to launch. When I'm behind an account, I don't have the right to launch. What, what does that mean? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a mentality at the plate. When you're 2 0, you have worked the count. You have done a good job laying off a couple pitches that now the pitcher has to make a decision to come to you. And you've earned the right to sit there and, and get the bat head out front and try to hit for power. But if you've swung in two pitches or if he's made two really good pitches and he's got you to strike two, you don't have the right to do that anymore to just sit for a fat pitch and try to hit it out of the plate. Now, all of a sudden, you've got to give in a little bit, give up the power, 
get on top of the ball, let it get deep, and try to just put the ball in play. So that's my theory on that one. Dude, listen, bro, I've been around a lot of guys, and I've been around a lot of hitting coaches and a lot of people I've played with. You were one of the – When I remember playing with you in 2000, being like, man, this guy really understands hitting, and I'm sure you understand it even more now having hit with your kids because I know for me hitting with my kids, I'm like, man, I'm really starting to understand it. having to really teach it is different than, than being able to do it. Um, what, can you, what, what is your philosophy? Because I'm interested, in, even as an analyst, on the whole launch angle thing, like – you know, because, you know, I have my theories, but what are, what are your theories on the whole launch angle thing, D? You know, I had this conversation in spring training with an analytic guy, and, 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 it, and, it, and it made so much sense the way he put it to me that I know where they're coming from, but I under, also get it, why we screwed this up. Because he said, listen, if you look at the numbers, the ball that's pulled at a 27-degree launch angle at about 103, 4 miles an hour, does the most damage in baseball. That hit does the most damage in baseball. In case we know what that hit is, it's called a home run, right? So right. the guy said the, yeah, the guy said to me, he said, so you need to teach your hitters to do that. And I'm like, yeah, but, okay, pitchers spend their whole career trying to pitch around you doing that. You know, they throw low and away and up and in. You can't just go out there and launch a ball. Let me give you a great analogy of, of this in tennis. If you were to say, what's the most devastating hit in tennis, it'd be a forehand winner. So you, so if you were to go to a tennis player and just say, let's just work on the forehand winner, he would say, well, you're crazy because they're not going to hit it to my forehand. They're going to hit it to my backhand if all we do is work on the forehand because we won't have a backhand. It's very similar in baseball. If you just work on one stroke, launching it, you can't launch low in a way. You can't launch chest high fastball. You've got to get on top of those. So it's really, it's, it's, we created this one approach hitter in baseball, one approach, one swing, one approach. There's no, you don't hear the term adjustments anymore. You hear the term approach. And when I hear approach, I hear one approach. In our day case, we made adjustments. You know what I'm saying? We, if a guy could throw a high fastball, we had to change the path. You know, if, yeah. a, guy, if a guy if you had a sinker coming in, you had to inside out the ball. You couldn't just launch and roll everything. So that's, to me, that's what I, I think we just we went off track, but it's coming back. It's coming back. Yeah, no, I was going to say, like, you know, you, I mean, you lived it with your sons, but generally for like the parent out there now that are, you know, it's almost like by like 10 years old, they're kind of like putting all this 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 stuff into those kids heads. How do you feel about that? And how early do you, do you have to think hitting philosophy? And on the flip side, how long do you just say, hey, let the kid enjoy the game first before we start putting all this stuff in his brain? Well, it's interesting. Every chance I get, and you guys have this show, maybe you could help parents. If you have a young, really young kid and he shows a little bit of talent, video his swing and don't just teach him how to use his swing. Don't change. Don't send him to a hitting coach at an early age because now all of a sudden you get taught – away from your natural movements and you can never get them back it's like it's like you it's, but if you've got that video of your, your five-year-old swinging the bat those are his natural movements if you look at the game right now uh, the top five or six best players in the game are from different countries that don't have video and don't have analytics and don't have all this and they're so dynamic when they swing the bat the american players have been over coached i mean they are taught how to swing a bat we were never taught how to swing a bat case or how to, how to run or how to throw. We just went out and play, and then we tweaked it at a certain level when we get there. And we got to get back to that. We got to let kids be natural. Everybody yeah. swings it different. Yeah, I love that, what Dante said right there to end. It's just, that is so true. Like, to all the parents out there, like, let your kids have fun. Let, let them play baseball. Let them be with their buddies. I remember when I was 12, like, I didn't even know how to swing, but I was really good. But I, it wasn't even about that. It was about having fun. It was about the sleepovers, getting hot dogs after the games, like cookouts, you know, all that stuff. So, you know, I, I think it is great. It's great to have a platform where you can talk from the perspective of playing at the highest level of like, hey, listen, most of these kids probably won't be big leaguers. Don't treat them like big leaguers at a young age. Treat them like kids. Let them have fun. And I just thought that was a great message from Dante. Yeah, you, and, and we cut that off right before. What, what you said after what Dante said just there was one of my favorite things that you've said on all 10 of these episodes. And you said you were talking to your son the other day, and he was like, 
you were like, listen, bro, you don't, you're so fired up about, you know, getting a hit or getting out. When you were nine years old and hit 600, you didn't care. You just, yeah. you would just hit 600 and go play with your friends after the game. And that's how you got to treat the game, right? Right. No, it's so, it's so true. And it's crazy when you see parents just going to that next level of, you've got to do this. You've got to take lessons at right. eight, nine years old and all that stuff. No, you got to see the ball and crush it. Yeah. You got to see the ball and drive it. I used to say, I used to say kids get visual. See the ball and drive it in the gap. Drive it over the kids' heads. But more impo- most importantly, have fun and play the game hard. That's it. Right. And speaking of having fun, okay, so this is probably the most ridiculous thing we do on this show. We call it 9 and 90. We've done it starting, I think, in like episode four. When I first brought this to your attention, I don't think you bought into it. Right or wrong? <laughs> well, you know, anything new change, I'm like, hey, that sounds good. But, <laughs> dude, I trust you so much and your expert uh, opinion about producing right. the show that I'm like, all right, if Chin says 990 is good, <laughs> I'll roll with it. The scary thing about 990 is I don't know any of the topics right. or anything like that. So that's yeah. kind of a cool thing we run yeah. with, and it's, it's fun. It's fun to do it. Yeah, as sloppy as the background of Casey's office is right now and as crazy as he sounds, <laughs> he prepares. And Sean gets very, very nervous when he's not prepared. And just so you know, I'm. this is a fact. We always say it. Everybody says it on things. Sean does not know the topics I'm ever going to give, correct, every time? Correct, correct. And some of them are absolutely ridiculous, which points out how (laughs) messed up my mind is where I come up with these things. But just in case anybody hasn't heard of them yet, here right now is the best of 9 and 90. Here is what we're doing. We're calling this Nine in 90. We have theme music for it. It goes along with the animation. At least we got got the music going, baby. Make sure we have this jam. (laughs) Nine topics in 90 seconds. Ready for this? Yes. clock. I'm gonna do it myself. This could be anything. It could be sports. It could be outside of sports. Are you ready for this? You gotta get through nine to finish a complete game. Your time yeah, starts now. Ultimate warrior or rowdy Ultimate Warrior or Rowdy Roddy Piper. Rowdy Roddy Piper, the hot rod. You gotta go check out his A and E biography. If I watched it the other night, I was like, I was up to 1 a.m. I was like, I love Rowdy Roddy Piper. Go. We're running out of time. 20 seconds. Who would win in a fight? A bear or an alligator? Bear. Surf or turf? Surf and turf. What? Uh, surf, did you say surf or turf? Yes. Yeah, I'm saying surf, surf or turf. Go. Pedicures for men, yes or no? Pedicures for yes, men. Yes, I love pedicures. Yes, I, I love pedicures. The, the ladies hate me. I love pedicures, though. Casey, ready? Skyline Chili or Texas Chili? Skyline Chili. Thunder. Texas. Texas. This is a good one. Would you rather vomit on your hero or have your hero vomit on you? Oh my God! Uh, I'd rather have uh, I'd rather vomit on my hero. One hundred percent vomit on your hero. <laughs> I don't want someone vomit on me. I don't care. Uh, I'm gonna let my kids Egg salad, chicken salad, or tuna salad. Oh, I like a look at egg salad with hot chipotle hot sauce on there. The luba. Uh, would you rather be twelve feet tall or two feet tall? Uh, twelve feet. Who would you rather have play you in a movie, Schwarzenegger or Stallone? Would you rather have a third nipple or an extra toe, Sean? Extra toe. Extra toe because I can put my shoes on. Harry Connick Jr. and Drew Brees both run for mayor of New Orleans. Who wins? Sean. Drew Brees. Drew Brees right now. Harry Connick 30 years ago. (laughs) Better duck, Donald or Daffy? Donald. (laughs) Adam Dunn and Aaron Boone fall off your boat and you can only have one life to save them. (laughs) Who are you saving? Sean first. God, are you serious? Uh, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta double. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw them out there and have them just both grab it right, right in the hook themselves in the arm slots. Here you go, boys. Here's one best. Hook yourselves in the arm slots. Save yourself. Let them fight it out. Let them fight it out. <laughs> Backstreet Boys in sync or New Kids on the Block? I have to go with 98 degrees. Nick Lachey, baby. 98 oh, degrees, Cincinnati. <laughs> Dante. 
my wife had a big crush on the new kids on the block, so I gotta go new kids. <laughs> Perfect. He's <laughs> one of your kids. Does he want to quit everything and become a traveling circus clown? Okay or no way? Oh my god. I, uh, yeah, I guess it's okay. If you want to do that, I can travel the country. I mean, I, I would probably have to see you want to see a psychiatrist first, maybe. <laughs> I think that's I think that's what I want to do, right? <laughs> you, you can only have one of these the rest of your life, mustard or mayo. I know your answer. May oh mayo, mayo. I love mayo and then like tur turkey cheese, pickles and mayo, kid me? Legit. Dude, I, I love mayo, I'm a mayo guy, I can go mayo. Two on one, no holds bar, steel cage match. <laughs> Dante Jr. and Bo versus Dante Sr. by himself. Who walks out of the ring? Oh, my God. I, I have to say, with the dad strength that I've seen Dante Sr. have, he's a double close. He's a double close on the way for Bo and Dante for pinning one of them. One, two, three. I'm going with Dante Sr. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I'm going to say, I, I'm a, I would be tough to beat there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bro. My mind is. I, I have a pretty sick mind, but it's fun. <laughs> well, it looks like my mind's matching your mind for some sick reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what the crazy thing changed? It's so funny, man. When when I, you know, you talk about the 9 and 90 and all that stuff. And we always joked around at the beginning of the show. Like, uh, I think one of the first episodes, like, if you come on nofilter.net, you can see where the sausage is made. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can really see yeah. the blunders. And I, you know, it's been funny trying, like when we were trying to get Dante Bichette on, where, where you know, he w we couldn't get his signal right. Oof. We got all these different things going on. And like, and, and it, it's funny, uh, you know, it's not always perfect, brother. It's not yeah. always perfect. So there's some funny moments and all that. So here's a few of the moments of, of, of checking out where the sausage is made for the mayor's office and how we get it done. Nice. Chinch, I think I hit start streaming. Oh, dude, sorry, I'm here. I, I think what we're on. I just hit I just hit start streaming. Oh, all right. Hey everybody. <laughs> Boy, I think I need glasses, Chinch. I don't know what's happening. They say when you get to I'm 46, they say oh. when you get to 45, it starts happening, but for some reason I'm having technical difficulties. I can't hear it. Oh, okay. We'll screw it. There, there it is. It. There right. it is. That's our open walk. Did you, did you see it? Did you see it? <laughs> oh, you could see it. Oh, we walk. Can you? Do we have? Do we have your audio? Can we hear you? Now, go to. What about your? What about your? Um. Um. On the settings in the corner. Go to that settings button. Put your glasses on. Go. To <laughs> Hello, can well, you hear me? Yeah, yeah baby. We're back, yeah, and we're back in business, baby. Right. Getting the band, getting the band back together. Well, that actually happened. And uh, you know, if you Aaron Boone is the man. Oh. <laughs> Hold on, we lost your audio again, bud. You hear us? Dang it. This is uh this did you lose my audio again? I mean my video again? We uh we have your, go ahead, we have your audio. All right, so here's how we're going to do this. Ready? Hang on one second. Yeah. I'm going to get some books because I'm going to raise this up. Oh, okay. I'm oh, going to so raise myself. myself too. I got to raise. I'm going to raise. Too. I'm going to raise myself up a little bit. I think. <laughs> I think. It, does it look right? Oh, that looks good. Whatever you're doing right. Oh, that looks really good. That's better, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tilt it. Tilt it more. Get the top of your head. You should have like an inch. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that looks. Let me good. get. Let me get. Right. Let me get one more. Let me get one more book. All right. I'm gonna get tall here. Okay. Here we go. I'm getting up that's there. Better. That's be that's better, Chance, right? Yeah, that's good. Look at me. Look how tall I am Dude, now. You're looking good, bro. You you grew. <laughs> you're the jacked. I'm trying to get as jacked as you, bro. <laughs> we're waiting on uh we're waiting on my man Dante Bichette, baby. 
What do we got? We got a tech update? Uh, yeah, we got a tech update. Is it a positive one? It looks um, negative on your face right now. Yeah, it looks negative. He said, um, Leslie said our tech, Leslie, she said um, he's, he's stuck on loading because it's, it's, I think the connection in the hotel is not great. So we're just chilling. You want to take a little so what, what, what about what, what if we bring what if what if we see if, how can we make being how can we be athletes right here and switch it up how can we like can we bring dante on it's a great question how about this you know what i mean can he call in we can have him wait a minute what, what, about, what if i put him on my phone hold on I think I might have something that can handle this right now if I do this correctly. Okay, Chich, make uh, it happen, bro. This is, where, this is how the sausage is made, everybody. When you tune in, this is how the sausage is made. This absolutely is how the sausage is made. I do believe if I get my charger adapter thing here, I might be able to. Dude, we can do this. Phone. We can. What? What'd you say? Okay. What am I going to do? Do you want me to give you Dante's number, then you call him? Yeah, why don't you text me his number, but I got to remember. Click, click. Oh, there it is. Ooh, I got a shot here. I got a shot here. Hold on. Oh, bro, make it happen. You got, you got all the, you have all that big time equipment over there. I, I'm working with, uh, I'm working with AirPods. You got like a freaking headset and all this big time equipment. I got wires everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this is great, dude. This is so great. All right, yeah. All right, don't mind my body here, everybody. It's, it is what it is. Wait, I put that in there. The phone jack thing here. If I can figure out the phone jack for it, we'll be in business. Phone jack? Tell a story. Okay. Yeah, I can put it, plug my phone into the thing. Hold on. Here we go. Phone audio there. That goes there. All right, Case. Here's what we're going right. to do. While we are, while I'm doing this, what, was, what story was we going to tell the other day and we never got to it? We never got to it. What was that? Oh, you, oh, you know what? It was the um, praying mana story. Hang on, I mean, this is tech support. All right. Leslie. No, I don't see him. Ah. But we're, we're live. <laughs> we're live, bye. Well. Supposedly, supposedly Dante might be coming on. Uh, oh, here he comes. Uh, yes. Oh, yeah, baby. Dante, can you hear us? No, oh, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah so close but so far look at that little oh. wi-fi connection looks like a we zero to see me. Him. at least he exists <laughs> oh there's dante well, dante can you hear us oh yeah I you said you. oh hey. and now i can see you. oh there we go there we go <laughs> all right I I'm in the middle of a hall in the hallway. All right, stay right there, bro. Pull up a chair. Pull up a chair. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, All right. I got one right here, so I think we're good. Right, I think you've got good tech. Oh, yes, bro. Yes. Dude, that, you know what that, hey, Dante, you know, you, know, you know what happened there, bro? 0 for 3, couple of sliders. The guy comes up fourth at bat, and bam, you hit him left center dap for a freaking homer. That's what just happened. <laughs> <laughs> That was like I was like you talking to like one of your idols. It felt like to me. Isn't he the greatest? Like he's like just. Uh... I'm still here. I don't know how to get out. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh I appreciate just it. hit A. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, John, I just gotta say, man, I, I I have been I've been lucky to be in the sports production industry for. Uh, Man, over 20 years now, I've never had more fun. I, I'm telling you this as a friend and as like a co-worker or whatever we do, even though we don't get paid for this, but I've never had more fun doing anything. And I just want to thank you. I love you. And I hope we yeah. can keep doing this and have fun with it because it's always going to be fun. Tinch, I love it, dude. I feel the same way, man. All those years, 12 years in the big leagues, all the cool things that have happened. Like, I get the, my juices get flowing every week to get on the mayor's office with you and put this show together. Yeah. And I think one of the biggest things is, you know, I, I, we, all the people that tune in that are starting to tune in, we see we, we see the momentum that we're starting to build and people are starting to find us. But we just hope you guys are having as good a time as we are, loving the stories, loving the guests, loving the baseball talk, because it's all a ton of fun. And uh, we appreciate you guys 
you know, keeping uh, downloading our show and listening to us. And we hope you keep coming along for the ride and you've enjoyed this, our 10 week anniversary because yes. we made it, Chinch. Yeah. We can't wait. We can't wait I for can't. everybody else coming <laughs> along with us. And if you want to join us every week on nofilter.net live, please come join us. And like you said, we're on Spotify, Apple, and all the other things too. So, so uh, thank you everybody that tunes in. Chinchy, I love you, my man. And love I will you. see you next week. Dude, we did it.